Hello everyone. Today we're reading Miss Crup Cracks Me Up by Dan Gutman. Chapter 1. Field trips are boring. My name is AJ and I hate school. It was Monday, the worst day of the week. We were on our way to lunch in the vomitorium at Ella Mentry School. My friend Ryan Dole was the line leader. I was the door holder. All the guys were talking about the big football game that was on TV over the weekend. All the girls were gabbing about some girly stuff, like what color shoes they have. Enough chit chat, said our teacher, Mrs. Daisy. Mrs. Daisy used to be Miss Daisy but she went off and got married to our reading specialist, Mr. Mackey. So now we call her Mrs. Daisy. I just got some great news, she told us. Next week, our class is going on a field trip. Yay, yelled all the girls. Boo, yelled all the boys. Oh, I remember the last time we went on a field trip. It was totally lame. Do you know why? We went on a field trip to a field. How lame is that? We had to look at disgusting bugs. Our science teacher, Mr. Docker, even ate one of them. But then, Mr. Docker is off his rocker. We should go on a field trip to an amusement park or a video arcade. That would be cool. I love field trips, said this annoying girl with curly brown hair named Andrea, who loves everything teachers love. Me too, said her crybaby friend, Emily. Where are we going? We're going to visit a natural history museum, Mrs. Daisy said all excited. What? A natural history museum? Natural stuff is boring. History is boring. And nothing's more boring than a museum. So a natural history museum is sure to be the most boring place in the history of the world. Now you know why I hate school. Chapter 2. Weird People I grabbed a lunch table in the vomitorium with the guys. Andrea and some of the girls sat next girls sat at the next table. Michael, who never ties his shoes, put straws in his nostrils and said he was a walrus. Neil, who we call the nude kid, even though he wears clothes, put tater tots over his eyeballs. Ryan balanced his lunchbox on his head. Tater tots and eyeballs. Straws in nostrils, balancing the lunchbox on his head. Ugh, broccoli, I said as I opened my lunch bag. I'm not eating food that looks like a tree. I'll eat it, said Ryan, who will eat anything. Ryan eat, even eats stuff that isn't food. He's weird. I don't want to go to a natural history museum, Michael said. What a snore, I told the guys. I bet they're going to tell us the history of rocks. Hey, rocks are cool, said Neil the nude kid. I have a rock collection at home. You collect rocks? I asked Neil. Why collect something that's just lying on the ground? You might as well collect air. My uncle collects air, Ryan said. Whenever he goes on a field trip, sorry, whenever he goes on a trip, he brings an empty bottle along. He's got bottled air from all over the world. Your uncle is weird, I told Ryan. One time, he couldn't find a bathroom and had to use one of his bottles, Ryan added. Ew, gross, see? I told you he was weird, I said. That's when little miss I know everything opened her big mouth at the next table. Natural history isn't just about rocks and air, dumbheads, she said. It's about all the objects in nature, like plants and animals. So is your face, I told Andrea. Anytime anybody says something mean to you, just say, so is your face. That's the first rule of being a kid. I wish some plants and animals would fall on Andrea's head, like a 400-pound piece of broccoli and a hippopotamus. Chapter 3. The Giganotosaurus. Bingle boo, said our best driver, Mrs. Cormel. Lumpus cadoodle. Bingle boo, we all said as we piled onto the bus. 
Mrs. Cornwall invented her own secret language. So instead of just saying hello and sit down, she said Bingle Boo and Limpus Cadoodle. Mrs. Cornwall is not normal. I had to lug my sleeping bag with me because we were going to be spending the whole night in the Natural History Museum. Just what I always wanted to do, sleep next to boring dead stuff. At least I had my Batman sleeping bag. Batman is cool. There were some grown-ups on the bus with us too. Mrs. Daisy and Mr. Mackey and Mr. Docker were all there. Ryan's mom, Mrs. Dole, came along as a chaperone. That's a fancy word that means a grown-up who hangs around with kids to make sure we don't have any fun. Are we there yet? I asked Mrs. Cornwall as soon as she started driving. No, AJ, she said. I kept asking Mrs. Cornwall every five minutes if we were there yet. Anytime you're in a car or bus, always ask if you're there yet, even if you know perfectly well that you're not there yet. That's the first rule of being a kid. It took a million hundred hours to get to the Natural History Museum. Pinkle burf burfle nobbin, announced Mrs. Cornwall when the bus finally stopped. That means everybody get off the bus, in Mrs. Cornwall's secret language. As soon as we walked into the museum, we heard an announcement. The museum will be closing in five minutes. Yay! I shouted. We can go home! That means everybody else has to go home, Arlo, said Andrea. I knew that, I lied. I hate it when Andrea calls me by my real name. In the entrance of the museum, I looked up and saw the most amazing thing in the history of the world. It was a huge dinosaur skeleton that just about filled the whole room. Dinosaurs are cool. Not as cool as penguins, but still cool. Wow, everybody said, which is mom upside down. It's a giganotosaurus, said Andrea. He was one of the biggest meat-eating dinosaurs in the world, even bigger than T-Rex. That's right, Andrea, said Mr. Docker. How did you know that? I read about the Giganotosaurus in my encyclopedia, said Andrea, all proud of herself. He weighed eight tons. We should have gone, he should have gone to Weight Watchers, I said. My mom lost 20 pounds that way. Where do you think they got a Giganotosaurus, asked Ryan. They probably went to rent a dinosaur, Michael said. You can rent anything. Next to the Giganotosaurus was a big bear that was standing up on its hind legs like it was about to attack. It was cool and scary. Ryan's mom and the other grown-ups told us to spread out our sleeping bags on the floor underneath Giganotosaurus. Then they went off to do boring grown-up stuff, like drink coffee and talk about the weather. What's up with that? Grown-ups are always drinking coffee and talking about the weather. I tasted coffee once, and I thought I was going to throw up. But if they didn't drink coffee and talk about the weather, I don't know what grown-ups would do all day. They're weird. Speaking of grown-ups, I wrote a poem about my dad. It goes like this. My dad has hair growing out of his nose. If he didn't cut it, it would reach his toes. He also has hair coming out of his ears. I tried to tell him, but he couldn't hear. Why do men grow hair in such strange places? I thought it was weird when it grew on their faces. I unrolled my sleeping bag right next to Ryan's. Then I turned around and saw the coolest thing in the history of the world. I'm not going to tell you what it was. Okay, okay, I'll tell you but you have to read the next chapter. So, nana nana boo boo on you. And if you want to know what the coolest thing in the history of the world was, you're going to have to watch the next video of Miss Krupp Cracks Me Up. I hope you liked it, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.